with Soulful Creations and I'm back with another tutorial. This time it's the Trendsetter Satchel by It's So Kelly. Now, if you're a member of Creative Bag Making, which everybody's a member of Creative Bag Making, this is Kelly Rao and she is an expert bag maker and designer, teacher. And so I was, and she's a good friend too. I was so happy when she asked me to do the tutorial for her newest pattern. Um, it is such a fun sew. It comes together so quickly. It's great for beginners, intermediate, advanced sewers. It doesn't matter. She's going to give you so much information. It's just, you're, you're not going to have any problems making this. Um, Here's my two versions. I made this one. Um, it's vinyl. Both of them are vinyl with uh, ripstop lining. So no interfacing in either of these. Just a little bit in the uh, connectors. So that's already a plus. Um, I love that she gives you this big roomy pocket on the back. Um, there's this zipper pocket here on the front where I love that because I can just, it's big enough to slide my phone down in there. Um, then we have our top zipper and there's so much room in there as well. This is such a nice bag to take out every day to go. You'd want to go to amusement park, you wanna go shopping, you wanna just, you know, you hands free, you got this. She gives you these strap, different strap options. This is the sporty strap, okay? And I like the way that looks. This one, I have a store-bought chain strap, okay? You can put a chunky strap, you can make a crossbody strap from vinyl with an, an adjustable uh, strap. There's just so many different options for this bag, um, d depending on the look you wanna go with. So she also gives you five different design options for this front part here. If you notice, I have three contrasting vinyls on this one, and I have the two on this one. There are three other options. So there's so many different ways to customize this, customize this bag and make it your own. So, I like I said, if you're looking to get started in bag making, this is a good pattern to start with because you're going to learn so many different techniques that will take you into your bag making journey. So, without further ado, let's get started on making the Trendsetter Satchel by It's So Kelly. So, let's go over what we need to cut out for our Trendsetter Satchel. So there are five design layouts that you can choose from. And for this tutorial, I'm going to be doing option number two. So I've cut out the two pieces that I need for option number two. And you cut both of those from your vinyl. And I'm using two different contrasting vinyls. So I have two of those. And let me just mention this off right from the start. If you're using vinyl, cork, um, leather, you do not need to cut out any interfacing. And if your lining is pack cloth, or in the case I'm using a um, ripstop fabric, you don't need any interfacing. Let me say it one more time. You do not need any interfacing. You only need interfacing if you're going to be um, using cottons. Um, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so again, I'm doing option two and I have my two pieces of vinyl for that. Okay, you're going to need to cut three zipper tabs from your vinyl. So I have three zipper tabs. Okay, um, you're also going to need to cut a back pocket front. Okay. And I'm using this vinyl for my back pocket front. You will need a back bottom piece cut from vinyl. So I have one of those. 
you will need your connector tabs. So you cut one piece, it's going to be for both tabs. And it needs to be stabilized with a piece of Cordura or, and I'm using Decaville Light. So I have a strip of that down the back of my connector piece. Okay, you will also need to cut, let me grab these pieces. You will need one piece of vinyl for your back top, your front top, and the front bottom, okay? So these are your vinyl pieces. And if you're doing, there's also some sh different strap options. So this, I'm making the, the sporty strap. So it's a little short strap. I'm cutting from my vinyl and I have a piece of Decaville Light, again, Decaville Light, a Cordura, um, to stabilize it. So the strap options, you can, um, do a chain strap for your crossbody strap. You could do, uh, you can make a full crossbody strap from your vinyl. If you, um, there, you can do a shorter chain strap. So there are some different uh, strap options there, but this is for the sporty strap. So I'm doing, I cut one from the vinyl. Okay. And for your lining, again, I'm using this rip stop fabric. It's light, lighter than um, waterproof canvas, the Autotex that I like to use for my bag. Um, she does not recommend that you use um, any uh, real heavy waterproof canvas. So if you have your favorite waterproof canvas that's lightweight and you, you can use that. Or, and, but she suggests the pack cloth, but I didn't have any. And um, this on my first one I made, I used this ripstop and it worked just fine. So I'm using this. So this is the one back pocket lining piece, one front pocket lining piece, That's lining, that's lining number one, front pocket lining one, and then front pocket lining two. So they are a little bit different in size, so make sure you um, know which is which, okay? And then you will need two of your interior lining pieces. So I have two of those cut from um, the ripstop. Okay, so that's it as far as the uh, fabrics go. So again, no, you notice I have no interfacing because I'm not using any cotton. Now, hardware, the hardware you will need, okay, you will need two zippers. So number five zippers cut to size according to the pattern. Of course, you will need two zipper pulls. Now, she suggests that you use the donut pulls. I did not have any in the antique brass, but these are these will work because she just saying that don't use anything that's too long and dangly um, because they may get in the way of each other. But these um, are should work just fine. So I have two zipper pulls. Um, you will need two three quarter inch D rings. Okay. So two three to three quarter inch D rings. Now, depending on the straps that you choose, you're going to need two three quarter inch swivel hooks per strap. So if you're going to make the sporty strap like I'm making in vinyl, I need the two swivel hooks. If you're gonna make a, a cross body strap in vinyl, you need two swivel hooks. So if you're planning on switching out your straps, you may need more swivel hooks depending on how many straps you make. The, I'm also going to have this chain strap on mine. And it already has the swivel hooks attached. So that's why I only need the two swivel hooks, okay? And you will need about four double cap rivets, um, nine millimeter. So um, I have four of those and then um, a label if you're going to add your label. So that is pretty much it as far as hardware goes. So um, it's not a whole lot of hardware. This, this uh, satchel, shouldn't take that long to make. It's a very quick sew. So we're gonna go ahead and get 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 going on it. Um, so make sure you have all your materials cut out and let's get ready to make our trendsetter satchel by It's So Kelly.
Okay, so I'm back making the Trendsetter Satchel by It's So Kelly. And we're going to start on section one, which is our front, um, our front assembly. So um, you should have the shorter of your zipper tape with the zipper pull attached, two of your zipper tabs, the pieces that you cut out for whatever layout you chose. So remember, I'm doing option two. So I have the two pieces for that. You will need your B1 and B2 lining pieces, your top A piece, and your bottom C piece. So we're going to start preparing our zipper. So we're going to take the, the zipper tabs and we're going to place that right side down on top of each end of our zipper, leaving about one eighth of an inch of the zipper exposed. And we're going to clip that on and we're going to sew them on one quarter inch from the zipper, from the zipper tab, not from the end of the zipper. And do that on both sides. So just center it on and we'll just and as you make this, don't forget to look at all the little tips and tricks she shares in the pattern. They're very helpful. Okay, so now once we have it, 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 it should be looking like this, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're gonna fold that back and we're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch from that seam, okay? So just fold it back. And we're going to top stitch. And do the same on the other side. Okay, so now once you have that top stitched, we're going to trim the zipper tab down. Okay, so um, we're going to trim the sides down and to be the width of the zipper tape. And then we're going to trim off one inch off of each zipper tab. So first I'm going to trim this off just like this. I'll turn it over and do the same thing over here. And if you're scared you can't keep this straight, you can use a ruler and um, rotary blade to cut this. Okay. Just making sure my stitches don't. Okay, and now I'm going to trim off. So let me grab, I'm gonna grab this little ruler here. I'm just gonna mark what I'm going to cut off here. Okay. 
Ready. So now we have our zipper all prepared and ready for um, ready to go on our front panel. Okay. So first, let's start. Uh, let's let's set that aside and then measure. Measure. And make sure that the measurement is correct. I'm just going to measure. I won't tell you the measurement. Um, just read that in the pattern. Okay. So now I'm going to take my two pieces here for my design panel here and i'm going to sew that together okay so it could be one piece two three four five depending on what option you chose okay so i'm going to go ahead and sew this together Now, she tells you that it's best to just top stitch on one side so you don't have so much stress on the seam. So you can decide which side you want to top stitch to. Since I'm using this color, the thread that matches my solid color, I'm folding my seam allowance toward that and that's where I'm going to top stitch. If you prefer to top stitch on both sides, you can, but um, she gives us these little tidbits for a reason, and I think they are very helpful. So I'm going to do just as she suggests. Make sure you pull your seam allowance, your seam pretty tight so that your the size stays accurate. This is important that we keep the size correct. So everything goes together just right. Okay, so now that's what I have here. Okay, and I want this one on that side just like I have it. So now I'm ready to go ahead and place my zipper. So I want my zipper to open to the right. So I'm going to place my zipper down with the zipper pull going to the left. So right sides together, just like that. Okay. And I'm going to base that on. And it should fit just right across the top there. If it's a little too long, then go ahead and adjust it. But if we followed our seam allowance correctly, then it should be okay. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and base that in. One eighth of an inch. And give your zipper tape a, a nice press before you uh, install it. And you, it'll keep your zipper from being wavy. So I, I actually pressed mine with a little spray starch as well. Okay, so that keeps your zipper nice and straight. Okay, so now it should be looking like this, right? So we're, we're all together. So now we're going to take our lining B1 and 2. Now remember, they're not the same size. So make sure you're using the correct pieces. So we're going to do use B1. I have B1 on top, so I knew which one to grab. Okay, and I'm going to put that right on top. 
right where we just put this basted the zipper on right side down and i'm going to clip that on and we're going to sew that on at the full seam allowance Okay, now I, I'm going to slide my zipper pull down a little so it's not in the way. This is a great beginner pattern. I mean, in, even if you're not a beginner, it's just fun to make. Okay. And we're going to get that sewn on. I'm going to pull my zipper pull back the other way. So now that we have B1 attached, we're going to, um, just let me check real quick. So just, okay. B1, did I do the right one? I'm not sure that I did. Okay. Yes. Okay. Just checking. Make sure I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. Okay. So now when you, you're going to, so we have it like this. We're going to bring the lining to the back. Okay. And we're going to make sure it's pulled snug. Okay. So make sure. And yes, it's correct that you're going to have some hanging from the bottom here. Okay. So that should be exactly the way it looks there. Should be about a half an inch, okay? And we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to clip and make sure that nothing is moving because we're getting ready to top stitch. So we are going to Right, okay, just making sure. So we're gonna top stitch there. So make sure the sides stay lined up. I don't want anything shifting, so just make sure. Okay. Just like that. And now we're going to top stitch across this seam. Getting it together, coming together. Okay, so it should look like that after you've top stitched. Now we're going to take the top A piece, okay? So it looks like this, and we're going to put that right side down and match it up with the top of our zipper. Okay. 
and we want to base that on. So we're basting that one, base that on. Oops, got a little carried away there. <laughs> okay, so get that. You notice I take my time going across these zips because I, I want to make sure everything stays lined up and that I stay at the proper seam allowance. Okay, so I'm getting to the end here. Okay, so now that's basted on. Now we take our B2 piece right side up and we're going to place, so the, the, the back B1 lining should be right side and then this will, the right sides will be together. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to clip that in place and we're going to sew at our full seam allowance. So from the lining side, I find that it helps keep the vinyl from shifting around. Okay. Okay. So I can feel my zipper pull. I'm going to move that to the other side and finish sewing across. Almost done with our front assembly. Okay. Now we're going to push the top up. So the seam allowance is going up toward the top. It should look like that. And we're going to top stitch. Move these clips. Make sure your seam allowance is going up towards the top. And your B2 piece, it stays right where it is. That do not bring that up. Okay. Looking good. Okay, so now we have our pocket. We just need to put the bottom on. So keep these sides matched up. Now, I obviously, when I did my measuring, I cut a little bit off. I can, I'm gonna neaten that up, check my measurements. So don't worry about that. We're going to take our bottom piece, so the straight edge, and we're going to lay that right sides down, not all the way to down toward the lining, but right onto the vinyl, the exterior pieces, okay? And we're going to clip that. So, but first, I'm sorry, I skipped something. Let's go ahead and secure these sides down so they're not shifting. That would be very helpful at this point, okay? So make sure everything is Line. Like I said, I can tell I got a little off in my cutting, but that's okay. This is why we do this. So 
And I'm just going to go ahead and base that down. Like very small, one sixteenth of an inch. Do the same thing on this side. Keep everything in place. I was getting ahead of myself, which I tend to do. Okay, there we go. Now we can add the bottom. So right across there, just like that. Okay, and I'm just gonna clip it on the sides here. We're going to sew that on according to the seam allowance in the pattern. Pay attention to your seam allowances and because that's what makes everything go together. And we're sewing through all those layers, the lining layers, everything. Okay. And there we go. Okay. Now we're going to push that down, the bottom down. We do not have to trim any of that. Let's leave it. And we're going to top stitch. Okay. Make sure I put everything. Make sure my stitch everything looks straight. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to top stitch. So the seam allowance should be going towards the bottom. You should have your front assembly all done. Looks great to me. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just go and trim off the little lining that's peeking out. And then we're gonna uh, grab everything we need for our back assembly. And we'll be back. So now you should have your complete uh, front assembly. Make sure you measure it and make sure it everything is the size it should be. Um, I've done that and we're good. So now we have our back assembly pieces. So we should have our back, we should have the back top and our connector piece. So let's start with our connector piece. I've already drawn a line down the center on the back of my connector piece and I placed a piece of double-sided tape. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull the paper off. And we're going to fold the raw edges into that center line. So this one piece serve is for both of our connectors. We're going to top stitch down the sides and then we're going to cut it in half to make our two connectors, okay? So you can Smooth that out, roll it out. Um, I think I lost my box. Hold on a second. Let me check my bottom here. I think I pulled at least the last time. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and top stitch on each along side. If you hear the noise, it's trash day. Okay. And I'm going 
it's going to go right down the other side. Okay. Once you have that top stitched, we can go ahead and cut it in half. So I'm just going to go ahead, I'm just going to fold it like that. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut that. Okay, so now I have two equal pieces here. And on our back piece, I've already marked where we're going to place those connectors. Okay, but first we're going to feed on our D-ring. Okay. And then we're going to fold to the edges meet here. Okay. I'm just going to clip that for a second while I do this one. Okay. Make sure. Okay. I'm just going to cut a couple of little pieces of double-sided tape just to hold those in place. So I'm just going to put it right there at the end there. So then they just hold together. Okay, so that's one and then I'll do the other. And there we have, okay? And now we have to make a little mark on these, okay? So follow the instructions for where to make your mark. So this is our placement mark. Okay, and now we're going to Place it right on where the inside of that mark we made and line it up with the mark we made here as well. And then we're going to top stitch that on. We're going to base that on right below that line, one eighth of an inch below that line. So. This ensures that they go on evenly on both sides. Do the same thing for the other. Okay. So now we have our connectors basted on like this. Now we're going to take the top piece. We're going to place that right down, right sides together, just like that. And we're going to do two rows of stitching. We're going to stitch one eighth of an inch and then again at one quarter of an inch. Everything lined up. Okay, so let me go ahead and stitch it. Doing the one eighth of an inch. And 
And if you need a little hump jumper to, to go over these connectors, do that. Okay. So that's the first row of stitching. Now do a quarter of an inch. You should have your two rows of stitching. Now we're going to bring this up, fold this back. It's taut, pretty taut. And we're going to top stitch. So your seam allowance should be going up towards the top. Okay. No, so sorry. I'm telling you wrong. See, the seam allowance should be going down towards the bottom. <laughs> Gotta pay attention. And we're gonna top stitch across there. So sorry. Gotta get my mind right today. I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to move too fast. I'm trying to tell you. Those connectors would have been upside down if we had done it that way. Good thing. Uh, You know, good thing I double check myself sometimes. So that's what it should look like there. Now we're going to place a rivet on each of those connectors. Okay. If you so choose, and I do choose. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to um, install my rivets. I, I center it. And I think I'm just going to go about it about three eighths of an inch down from the seam line and give it a little dot there and the same thing over here about right there okay so once i mark that i'm going to go ahead and punch the hole for the rivets and get those installed and then we'll, we're ready to do the back pocket. So that's pretty much the back. Section two is done. Let me get those rivets installed and I'll come back with the pieces we need for our back pocket. My rivets are installed now on my back piece. So now for the back pocket, you need your G and G1 piece. So that will be the exterior piece and the, the lining piece. And I have already, added my uh, logo to the back of my um, pocket here. So I just use the uh, measurements that she suggested and I like that placement. So that's what I'm doing. So follow that if that's where you want. Or you can put your logo anywhere you want or have no logo at all. So I've just gone ahead, I put a piece of stabilizer and um, I covered it with some duct tape, okay? so. Now we're going to place these two right sides together, right up here at the uh, straight edge. Oops. And we are going to stitch that on. Follow your seam allowances according to the pattern. Okay. And 
you once you have that stitched on we're going to bring the lining to the back so that everything's wrong size together let's match up the bottom and what that's going to do is it's going to pull some of this exterior to the back so you'll have like a little bit of the exterior to the back of the pocket. Okay, so that's what you want. So make sure you smooth that up. And it's going to look like that, okay? That's what you want. So we add some clips and we're going to top stitch. So this can look just like that. So now we top stitch right across the top there. pocket looks just like this we're going to go ahead and we're going to base down the sides and then right across the middle um, don't worry about the curves we don't have to worry about that right now so get these threads and I'm just going to do a 1 16th just to hold these sides down. Sorry, I got some nose noisy people in my house. When you have a family of nine, you know, it's it's hard to keep them quiet all the time. <laughs> Okay, so there we go. And then I'll do I'll do the bottom. Ooh, I'm liking this so far. I hope you're liking yours. Okay. There is our back pocket. Now we're ready to go ahead and add it to our back. So we're just going to match up the bottom. Clip it on. Okay. the sides and we're going to base that on all around from we're going to go from the top here at the side all the way around back up okay yep. okay so let's give that top stitch here
And now we should have our pocket, our back pocket, perfect to slide any, anything you want to get out quickly in that back pocket. Nice, big, roomy back pocket. So now we have our back totally complete, our front. We're going to check our measurements, make sure they're, they're um, measuring what they should. And then now we're going to get ready to put do our top zipper assembly and put everything together i mean this goes so fast so excited to finish up okay so i'll be back with the pieces for our top zipper assembly okay so we're we have our front and back done now we're going to do our top zipper assembly so you should have your other zipper with the zipper pull on and your zipper tab okay so on your zipper take we're going to make a marking from um one end so and that's where we're going to fold to make our right angle. So um, I've already made the mark and I'm going to go ahead and fold it. So what I do is I fold at that marking and then I bring that up towards the teeth. So that makes the right angle there. Okay. And then I'm just going to pin that. You can staple it. You can pin it, whatever, whichever you choose. So again, I'm folding it and then pushing it up towards right up underneath the teeth of the zipper. Okay. Okay. And yours, it should look like that. And now I'm just going to sew down on, uh, sew right down along the edge there to tack it in place. Same thing on the other side. Once I get a couple of stitches, I move my pin because I don't want to sew through that. Okay. So now my zipper's ready. Okay. So again, it should look like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and just like we did before with our zipper tab, we're going to place that, center that, leaving about one eighth of an inch of our zipper hanging out. And we're going to sew our zipper tab on just like we did before. Right sides together and then once we have that on so we're going to do something a little bit different so now it should be looking like this so bring that zipper tab over pulling it pretty snug and we're going to well first we can trim we can trim that little one eighth let's just trim that we don't need that anymore so we're going to trim that Okay. Now bring that over just like that. And then we're going to fold it back. Okay. And it should just be right up against the edge of the zipper there. Okay. And fold that back. So it should look just like that. And we're going to top stitch right at the seam, one eighth of an inch from the seam. Okay, so we're making a really narrow zipper tab. Okay. 
Then she calls this a skinny, her skinny tab. Now it should look like that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to let me get my threads out. And now we're going to trim it even with the zipper tape. So trim. Just like that. And we can trim the extra off the back as well. Don't trim your stitches. Okay. So now we have our now we have our zipper tab on. So now we're going to get ready to get this added to our pan, our front and back. So we're going to start with the front, and we're going to make some marks on each end. We're gonna do that on the front and the back, right up here at the top. So check your pattern for the measurement. Okay. And we do that on the back as well. And that's where we're going to put our zipper. So it should fit right within those marks. So get it all lined up, get your zipper tape. So the front, the zipper should be going in the same direction. Okay, so the zipper pull should be going, to, should be closing to the left. Okay, so I'm gonna clip that on matching these raw edges. And the teeth of the zipper should be right at this end. I'm gonna open up my zipper a little, make it easier. Okay. Sorry, let me see. Right. Now, once you have it all clipped on, then we're just going to go ahead and we're going to baste it in place. So your zipper is right side down. Okay, so now it should be looking like this. Once you have that basted on, grab your two H pieces. So it should be your lining, okay? And we're going to place one piece on top. So right sides together. going to sew that on. Okay. 
Remove the zipper. Cool. And we're gonna sew. Okay, I'm just moving my zipper pull again. So now we can trim this little piece hanging from our zipper, trim that off. And we're going to bring the lining to, to the back, okay? But we're not going, we're going to top stitch. Okay, so just bring that lining out and pull your zipper up. So the seam allowance should be towards this top band and we're going to just top stitch. So do not top stitch through your lining. We're only top stitching through the seam allowance and the top band and the zipper. So make sure that that seam allowance is pressed down. what we got going there now so oops alrighty so now we have our zipper the other edge of our zipper we're going to place that down right side down on the other on the back part of our um, our satchel and we're going to put it within those marks just like we did on the front and we're going to baste it on. So right sides together. Open up my zipper. Move that zipper pull out of the way. This would be so much, you know, just so nice to carry when you're out for a day, maybe going, to, you know, to an amusement park or you're just out, you know, you're going to travel and you just want to be hands free. So nice. Okay. So now we have our zipper basted to our back. We're going to take the other lining piece we have right side down. So our two lining pieces are right sides together. We're going to put this on the other end of this, the zipper right here at the top. So the lining should be right side to the back side of the zipper. 
Okay, and we're going to sew that on at our full seam allowance. I can't keep stressing enough, check low seam allowances as you go because they change a little bit here and there. Okay. And it's gonna make all the difference in how easy, how good this turns out and how everything matches up. Okay, let me slide that zipper pull back out of the way again. Okay, we're getting there. We're almost done. And how fast was this? Even with all my little goofies. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna just trim that down. That piece of zipper. And again, we're going to pull that back. Okay, well, we're gonna pull it back this way toward the other lining. And we're going to make sure our seam allowance is going get down toward the top panel. And we're going to top stitch across there. Keep everything, keep the lining out of the top stitching. back we have our top zipper on now all we need to do is just put it all together so we're going to take our exterior pieces and we're going to put those right side together and our lining will go right sides together and we're going to get ready to stitch this together okay so of course we're going to need to leave an opening to turn it out, make sure your zipper is open a bit, okay? And we're going to make sure we match everything up. So right here, the seam here, where you zip these top bands, make sure you match that up, okay? And we can staple it, we can put a little double-sided tape there. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little bit of this 1 8 inch double-sided tape because you don't, you want that to, you want that to um, be matched up and you don't want it to, to shift when you're sewing. So I'm just gonna put a little piece there. Okay. So just like that. And then I'm going to stick that together and hope that holds it in place. So I'm just matching it up. Okay. I'm doing the same thing here. Okay, so that should hold. And I'm also going to put a clip to keep it, okay? And then over here, I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to put a little piece of tape. You don't want to use anything too wide since you don't want the tape in your seam allowance. I mean, to be outside of your seam allowance. Okay. And I'm going to match this up as well. Okay. 
Okay. And oh, that does it. Just like that. Oops. Okay. Now I can just start matching up the rest here that we're going to sew together. So again, follow your seam allowances to make sure your lining fits nice. I'm gonna sew this around. We're going to sew. I'm gonna leave an opening. You can either you can leave an opening in the bottom side, whatever you choose, whichever one you think will be, you know, um, not seeing I me, mean, but. I don't think you can really see down. So I'm just going to leave the bottom open and I'm going to start on one side. I'm going to sew up, go all the way around and then to the other side and um, back stitching, of course. And get this all together. Make sure you go around those curves nicely. If you need to draw your seam allowance on do that she gives you some tips for the curves as well so pay attention to those tips whole bunch of interfacing it's not difficult to turn out either I think I'm gonna use this is so slippery I think I'll use these clips for my lining And you see why we measured, we were measuring as we went to make sure everything comes together. Okay, and now we are ready to give this a sew. Make sure I'm going to check my bobbin and make sure I'm going to check just like I said, I'm going to do exactly what I'm telling you to do and check the seam allowances. So, right. Okay. So let me just check my bobbin, make sure I got enough. If not, I have one already prepared. So this one's low. So let me get a fresh bobbin. And then we will go ahead and get this finished up. Then all we have left to do is I'm just going to sew up my sporty strap and get that on. Okay, so I'm just going to start here on the straight, a little bit, maybe an inch or so in. Okay, and I know that my machine... When I sew this ripstop by itself, my machine, it, it doesn't particularly care for it because it's a little thin, but sometimes I'm able, most of the time I'm able to make it work. So if I just take my time, if it starts to gather up, let me know. Usually what I do is I just decrease the stitch length and it usually will work just fine. Okay, so now I'm getting here. Okay. 
aqui. Take your time going around those curves. The seam allowance does get bigger as you go, as you sew it towards the lining. So pay attention. I knock in the trash my tape oh, knock my ruler down thank you okay yeah, that's my jazzy always helpful okay so now we've gone around I left the opening to turn it um so now we're ready we're so ready to turn it out we can trim down so that it Looks smooth and trim down. Okay. And actually, you can do another row of stitches too if you want. I think. Um, that's what she suggests, and I know I did it on the first one, so right within the seam allowance, I think, and I just did it on the exterior. So I'm just going to run another row of stitches. So so I'm in within the seam allowance. That one goes faster because you don't have to worry about it being as perfect. So just trim. So I'm basically concerned more with these with the corn with the curves. So I just trim those down. I don't trim a whole bunch. Okay, so now let's turn her out. So I'm just gonna get my hand in there. And I'm just gonna start pushing this in. I'm grabbing from the inside and I'm be very careful that you don't tear anything. And I'll start pushing that. trickiest part is getting the bottom up past the zipper. You don't want to rip it. And this vinyl is a little stiffer. I 
ain't making this look easy, am I? <laughs> it's really because my vinyl is a little stiffer. And also, because my hands are no good either, so sometimes it takes me a minute. Here we go. Alright, here we go. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Put it in your pocket. Right. Did I flip my pocket to the wrong side? That's what was going on. I grabbed the wrong. My pocket's inside out. That's why. Be careful of that. I was pulling the wrong part and push my pocket inside out. Okay, there we go. This vinyl's pretty stiff. Well, I really wanted to make this part look easier, but my first one, I turned out so easy, <laughs> but my vinyls were like a lot thinner than this one. This one's really kind of thick, so I might have to get Jazzy to help because my hands are no good, but hold on, hold on, we might have it here. Ay, ay, ay. Now, you can you imagine if I had been hard headed and used a whole bunch of stab stabilizers after she said, Don't do that, you don't need that? Okay, there we go. It's coming, it's coming. You see how thick my vinyl is? This vinyl is pretty thick, so that's the only reason. So, we'll get it. We will get it together. Push the tab up over there. And then I will continue to get my... Yeah. Okay. The corners are poking out. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to work for it. Okay. So I'm going to take my little tool I have here my little chopstick and I'm going to go ahead and push my corners out then I don't have to work my hands so much here we go Still have to close the lining but I just want to get it all tucked in and make sure everything looks good and feels good in there Sorry that took a minute, <laughs> but hey, you know, we did it. That's the whole important thing is that we did it, you know? So now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to push these corners out in my lining. And then we're going to fold that seam allowance down. And we're going to, you can hand stitch this if you're, you know, a little particular about the stitches being seen. But I, you know, 
I don't think anybody's going to be looking down in my bag here. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to top stitch very closely to close that up. And I'm not worried that my stitch, my thread is a different color either. Okay, close that. What happened? Oh, Jazzy scared me. Okay, so now. I can give that a little press later. And let's get it back in. Make sure the corners get my little chopstick again. Make sure the corners are all pushed in nicely. Okay. Make sure this is nothing sticking out. Oh, let me show y'all what I was talking about. Look at that. You see how it matches up nice? See, the double-sided tape worked. Worked, worked, worked. Okay, let me just make sure. I don't have any threads coming. Okay, there we go. So now I'm gonna go ahead quickly. First, let's see what it looks like with the chain strap. So this would be a nice, if I wanna wear it as a crossbody, put that on. And now we have a cute little crossbody version. Okay, so let's quickly just go ahead and sew up the sporty strap because I want you to see what it looks like with the different strap. So I have my piece here. I have a piece of um, Decaville light to stabilize it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and mark the center. Mark the center here. Okay. And get my tape. I'll put a piece of half inch double sided tape down the center. Go ahead and fold these raw edges to the center, just like we do when we're making a regular old strap. Okay. And it'll look like that, and then we're gonna fold it in again. Add some clips to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna top stitch on each side. This is just how you would do your crossbody strap too. If you were sewing a crossbody strap, and then you would need to have a uh, adjustable slider as well. And if you're using vinyl for your strap, get, get one of those wide mouth uh, sliders for thicker straps. And you can also put some strap ends on there as well. Or you can leave it just as is, or you can edge paint the ends as well. So we have options. I love options. Okay. 
Okay. Just trim that down evenly. Now I'm going to add my my three quarter inch hooks. Okay, fold it over. I'm just gonna fold it over about an inch or so. Okay, because that's where I want it. And I'm gonna add a rivet. You can sew it down in place if you want, or you can add a rivet like I'm gonna do. So I'll just quickly. So I will just quickly, I'm just eyeballing it about where I want it. But you are welcome to measure. Told you this vinyl's a little thicker, but nice. I love it. This is the Kaya vinyl from Indo Love Creation, and I love it. It's kind of suede, gives it has a suede look to it. Okay, so now I'm just gonna set those rivets. See how quick that was? Okay, so let's see what it looks like. So we see what it looks like with our chain strap. And then let's see what it looks like with the sporty strap. That's cute too. Look at that, that's so cute. And you carry it on your arm, you just go. That is so cute. I love it. I love the options. I love it. So you could put a chunky chain strap on there too. It's just going to look different. Okay. So this is, again, the trend setter um, satchel. Trend setter satchel by It's So Kelly. And it, if you're looking for a quick sew, if you're a beginner looking to learn some skills and techniques in bag making, this is the perfect pattern for you. So go ahead, click that link in the description to get a copy of the pattern. Like, subscribe. I appreciate it. It helps me to continue making these tutorials for you. And um, I'll see you the next time at Soulful Creations. Thank you.